The first question you need to ask yourself is, do I need dashboards? Not everyone does. What you need to know is the difference between data and information, the benefits dashboards provide, the difference between reports, dashboards, and scorecards, the questions to ask to plan for your dashboards, and how to select measures and metrics. Why do you need to know it? Well, let's get started with this. Millions of people around the world use Excel. Sometimes they're the people that actually create and modify the data, and other times they are managers, supervisors, or other stakeholders who are just interested in what the data represents, usually as it relates to some type of business performance, but not always. What every one of these people needs to know, though, and what they'll tell you, is as excellent as Excel can be, being presented with row after row and column after column of data is usually not the thing they look forward to each day. What most people need is information, not data. What's the difference? Well, data is the raw stuff, the numbers, without really meaning or context. Let's run through a quick example. 123,000 is data. It's a number. Even if we add a dollar sign to it and make it $123,000, it still doesn't have too much meaning. What about $123,000? Is it the amount of money you owe on a credit card? Is it the amount you're going to purchase a new house for? Is it the amount of profit that was made on the last order or the overall profit year to date? $123,000 is still just data, no meaning and no context. If we add some labels, then it does start to become more useful. In other words, it's data that's trying to be information. $123,000 profit is getting there. If, however, we say our year-to-day profit is $123,000 and combine that with an average growth of 2.1%, now we're really starting to make progress. This is information telling us that $123,000 is the amount of profit we've made to date and that the average growth over the past five years, maybe, is much better than just saying 123000 Once again, 123000 what? And what does it relate to? That's what's missing with data. I think you get the idea. Data without context and meaning is useless. Therefore, presenting data is not productive or efficient. People have to take the time to understand it, and sometimes they don't understand it, or they don't understand it or interpret it correctly. At the least, they may not be focusing on the most important parts of the data. That means that we need to have an alternative. If this is where you find yourself or your company, then dashboards provide an easy to implement, low cost, accurate, and even fun alternative. And when's the last time you could actually say a bunch of data was fun? So what do we need to actually have a dashboard? Well, it's fairly safe to say that successful businesses have always required something called performance data. This performance data needs to be made available to those who are responsible for making decisions and manipulating operations and managing it so that they can act on that information appropriately. So the basis on performance data has not changed. What has changed is the nature of access to that information. These days, people demand instantaneous access to real-time data. Two important words there, instant and real-time. Not to mention the ability to access that data from any variety of devices, whether they're physically within the walls of a building or from a street corner halfway around the world. This applies to everything from research and development to marketing and supply chain management, production, all the way through sales and delivery and customer service for businesses. We also might need to access information about our health or our hobbies as we go about our lives. Times have changed, and it's not only management that is expected to make day-to-day -day decisions based on data, but instead, users at every level need to make decisions based on this information as well. What we run into is the fact that traditional reporting can provide data, and sometimes it does provide actual information on specific parts or elements of a business or our lives. Adequate insight into how reported elements relate to one another and affect the overall business or our overall health or the overall performance of a sports team may or may not be included, though, in regular reports. It just depends on the type of specific report. How many times, after all, have you been presented with some type of Excel file that was generated, but then there had to be a meeting so that the person who created the spreadsheet could tell everyone what they were supposed to get out of it? Dashboards, on the other hand, provide insight that is simply not available from standard reporting options. So, once again, why do we need to take time to create dashboards? Well, to acquire this type of instant insight, you usually have to consolidate data from multiple sources and turn it into information that decision makers can use. In order to get the bigger picture of how all the data interrelates with one another, 
and to get a clear understanding of what it means overall. If sales are up, how does it relate to the overall profitability of the company if costs also increased? If your caloric intake is higher, but you're also exercising more, how is that affecting your weight? So why exactly should we make dashboards to present information? Well, let's break it down into 10 simple reasons. First of all, we need to save time. You need to save time updating and inputting information. Managers and decision makers need to save time trying to figure out what data is relevant, and we all need to save time putting it into context so it has meaning. We also need to focus attention and understand the trends. We can make comparisons, we can see opportunities, and maybe find issues before they get out of hand. We also need dashboards in order to consolidate data, because data these days comes from a variety of places, especially from multiple sources, external databases, and even websites. In order to get all of that together and then make sure that it's always up to date and that updates are fast, we need to make sure again that we're using some type of reporting mechanism that handles all of that and manages it well. This is important because dashboards accommodate a wide variety of users. They need to access it, they need to interpret it, they need to interact with it, all in their own required ways. Because of this flexibility, we need to have reporting mechanisms that allow us to do that, and that would be a dashboard. Of course, all of this is to be more efficient, reducing the time it takes to get information instead of having to rely on people like data analysts to create it for us, to provide the information quickly and on demand, not to mention the time saved so each person does not have to interpret the information and figure out what it means on their own. Now, another problem can arise when we get the information. Sometimes we're provided with information, but we don't quite understand what it means, or we need to understand why the information is what it is. Dashboards allow us to easily drill down into areas that require further insight or analysis. Of course, all of these things aren't really important if it's not easy to distribute the information. The dashboards that we're creating are Excel solutions, not programming or macro solutions. Macros and programming, are all kind of difficult to create and distribute and to maintain. By using them in Excel, we can use some standard techniques that we're already familiar with to distribute the information to anybody who may need it. Of course, kind of the two high-level overall reasons for doing this is that dashboards make decision-making faster and easier, and they provide information that people will actually use. I can't tell you how many hundreds or thousands of times in each day people supply Excel information as nothing but spreadsheets. Often they're raw data, they're not even reports. And when people get page after page of data, very few people actually look at it, much less take time to understand it. If any one of these things is important to you, you should consider using dashboards. My guess is that several, if not all, 10 of them are important. So throughout this series, we'll be focusing on how to design, create, and distribute dashboards so that you can leverage these benefits for yourself.